Hi, quilters. Today's show is all about English paper piecing and the Go Me fabric cutter. Stay tuned for plenty of portable project inspiration. I'm Pam Heller, AccuQuilt's cutting expert. And I'm Erica Botker, AccuQuilt's creativity expert. Pam was turning on the air I was turning on the air, which I didn't get on, but it'll be okay. It's hot here today. It is very hot and muggy here in Omaha, Nebraska. Welcome to today's trunk show called English Paper Piecing Basics. Today we're going over how English Paper Piecing, mm -hmm. or EPP, is perfect for portable projects. That's right. We'll also be joined by a very special guest, Belle Bruner, who happens to love English paper piecing. And I am really excited to have her here on the show to share with you. Oh, me too. We have plenty more in store as well. Um, we have some sweet prizes, yes. on the go project ideas, and an inspirational trunk show. You, you just almost forgot that. I did, I was so excited you that Belle so is coming. excited about Belle. Before we get into that English paper piecing detailed look, let's meet our special guest, Belle Bruner. She began quilting in her mid 40s and fell in love with the craft. After taking an intensive pattern writing course, she began designing and publishing quilt patterns. Now she focuses on confident beginner patterns and techniques that even advanced quilters love to make and believes that all people of any age can learn how to quilt. Her patterns are sold by major distributors and the Fat Quarter Shop. And Belle is an ambassador for Havel Sewing, The Daylight Company, and Alicia, those are those cool They're irons. Cool irons, yeah. She is a former uh, 2022 Maywood Studio Maker and is a 2023 instructor for AQS Quilt Week, the Original Sewing and Quilting Expo, and International Quilt Festival. Having spent years helping nonprofits and board of directors in other businesses, Belle expanded her Seam Sew Me business to also specialize in providing leadership, governess, consulting, and education for quilt guilds, boards of directors. She believes that strong, inclusive quilt guilds contribute to strong communities. And I would have to agree. I would too. All right, let's get her on. Thanks for joining us today, Belle. Hello, Belle. Hey, Pam and Erica. Thanks for having me today. We uh, are so excited to have you here. We are. Okay, so we're just gonna jump right in and okay. ask you how long you've been doing English paper piecing. Only a year and a half. Isn't that amazing? Oh. Just amazing. Okay. So what got you into EPP? Yeah. So you know how we get a little bit of withdrawals when we're not in our studio and we're not able to make quilts? Yes. Yes. And so I had seen, you know, on the internet and stuff about, you know, this English paper piecing thing. At the time, I really didn't know a lot about it. So I was going to my very first quilt con and I thought, you know, I need something to do on the plane on the way back. This would be a great time to start. So I bought a little kid at quilt con and that was um, a year and a half ago. And I've been doing EPP when I travel ever since. So camping, that amazing. my father. Yeah. Yes. I find that amazing that just a year and a half ago, that right. was, you right. weren't and now you are. Quilt con was the start of it all. There you go. It was. All it right, was. do you have a favorite English paper piecing project? So <clears throat> the hexi shape is my favorite and I will show you my favorite. Let's look here. So I love kind of vintage looking things. So look I have a that. hoop. Oh, and this that is, is so actually, cute. I don't know if you can see, but I yeah, embroidered We'll get you a full screen here. Look yeah. at that. Oh, that's adorable. Thank you. You can just hang it in your studio, hang it on the wall. I love it. Uh, yeah, this one I'd say is my favorite one. And you just took those hexes and applied them onto the circle, right? And put it in I the did. hoop. I just applied them on and then put them in the hoop. And, and then did uh, a little embroidery. Oh, that is so cute. Thank you. All right, well, do you have any tips or tricks for people who are either just starting EPP or maybe who have been doing it for a while? I do, I have a couple. So I'm gonna show you one, this is my favorite. Okay. Um, it is actually making your own leave-in papers out of stabilizer using oh. the AccuQuilt Go Cube. Oh. oh. So All right. I'm gonna so show you how I do that. Show us, I was gonna say, we're gonna need to see that, Miss Bell. Okay, 
So I use a firm stabilizer. And what happened was I got to where I didn't like to remove papers. I just wanted to stitch it, get right. it done, and not take out the papers, right. right? Here, I've got some other needles. So you take your stabilizer, and this is about um, a four inch strip from a roll of firm stabilizer. And I got in my closet and thought, what can I use? besides papers, and it was this, because when you wash it, it turns into kind of like tissue paper. You don't even know it's there. So here's what you do. I'll okay, just I'm watching. And I will fold this over accordion style. So if you can see, I just kind of oh, put sure. it right up there to the edge. And then I'm just gonna fold this over about four times. Okay. There's three, four. We can get a fifth one out of it. Oh, yes. Like that. Then, of course, you'll just put your mat over the top. And, you know, I take my Go Me with me sometimes if I haven't had time to cut all of my fabrics and my leave-in stabilizers. I'll just take it with me because it's so portable. Oh, it is. That's a great idea. We're going to talk about that today too. So you're right on, you're right on time with that comment, Belle. Right on cue there. So there we go. You now have your leave-in stabilizer papers, which is okay. That's extremely so easy. clever. It is so, because that, what a time savings, right? Right. Well, it is, and it you know it's firm enough. These are firm enough that you can still fold over your fabrics. You know, I use right. glue, so I glue based. Okay, so, so do I. Yeah, they're firm enough. You can still get a nice solid edge and, it, you know, a nice clean edge there. Right. And then you ultimately will just stitch them all together. And you don't have to take these out. You just leave it in your project or if it's in a quilt, you wash it. You don't even know it's there. So you just don't even, it's, it's thin enough that you just don't even realize. Well, okay, I love the fact that you don't have to take the papers out. Yes. Right. Yeah, so I mean, because that's on the half back. the battle, right, is how do I get those papers out? Right. Yeah. So you okay. can see it's still bendable, moldable, flexible. Yeah, yeah. But they're yeah. all still in there. Oh, my gosh. That is so clever. Yeah, and so when I travel, I usually just clip. So this is from the entire, all of these pieces right here that you see. These are all from the Go Cube, and I just right. kind of keep them clipped. Oh, yeah, pile. that's a great use for those little bindy clips. Yeah. You're and all color-coordinated, too, Miss Bell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's my branding colors. <laughs> oh, there. We knew. They were... Wow, look yeah. at how fun that then, is. So I just clip them together, and they're ready to go. Um, so that is definitely one tip for sure, is yeah. to be able to make my own papers. It saves time. I can get to stitching, which is nice to be right. able to do. Well, um, and I feel like it's more pliable, right? Because sometimes when I have that cardstock in there, it's really hard to get my needle right. around the little edge. You know, and I was having trouble and then kind of struggling with that, with mm -hmm. putting them together. And then I saw somebody said, well, just fold it. And I went, oh, you can do that? Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. What's nice about these is, your needle just, if you get a little too close, it goes right through. It's yeah. No problem. Your needles don't dull. You don't even know that you've done it. Oh, wow. That's fabulous. That's, that was worth coming that to That was worth Tuesday. it. That was worth all of it. So thank you. I feel like now I'm ready to rush home and, and well, I know. get now back I into have my project. Stabilizer yeah. here. We're going to cut some and take we it. We are. We are. Oh, good. Good. Now. Well, you'll be able to get to stitching much quicker now. Oh, good. I love it. Now, do you have any new and exciting plans you want to share with everybody? I think there's a few things going on in your life, right? There are, there are. One is, and it kind of goes with all of this, I have um, a new um, curated thread line with Wonderfill. And so, as you can see, the colors actually Those matter. are bell colors. colors. Bell colors. I'm working on, yeah. They're um, beautiful. And so, you've got them listed here. So, I've curated this. This will release in October. And here's the other tip. This is 60 weight cotton thread. So I, I, I either use 60 weight cotton thread or the other thread that's coming out in September is I use 80 weight uh, cottonized polyester from Wonderfill. And this oh, is called the Terminator. Yeah. Look at how and, it all comes on one spool. Is that yeah, like, be, is that like be, bobbins or? 
It is, and there's a special little. way you use this. I'll be showing in September when it launches. Uh, how this works great for EPP as well as on your sewing machine to use up all of your bobbin thread. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So that's coming out September, October. Okay. Uh, and then also, I think that a lot of people will hopefully want to come to Arkansas, but we have been working on a quilting retreat, a small quilting retreat center on our family property. So it's 45 acres in the Washita National Forest. And it's an Airbnb, uh, and it has a large area on the other side of the house that will be a huge multi-purpose sewing room. So it'll house so 12 excited, quilters. Yes. Yeah. We I'm want so to excited. come. We want to come. come. So how can people find out more about like signing up for your um, Airbnb, to sign up for your retreat, to find your product? How can people find you? Sure, my website. So it will be listed when the retreat center is completely open. It'll be on my website, which is okay. www.seamsome.com. Okay, perfect. perfect. Love it. Love and it. how can our folks follow you on social media, Belle? I am mainly on Instagram, okay. and that is at seams underscore so underscore me. You Excellent. can find me there and also YouTube. I actually okay. do some YouTube videos also. Fantastic. Oh my gosh. Well, it has been so fun having you yes, here and meeting been. with you and learning a little bit more about English paper piecing. That's right. Thank you so much for coming on the show today, Belle. Thank you so much for having me. You all have a great rest of your week. All right. Thanks, See you Belle. back soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay, so we're going to Arkansas. Absolutely we are. Because we can drive there. I know how to get there. Uh, that's what you said. Oh, my gosh. We're just going to so pack up our car. And, and if you're going to Arkansas, you should go in the spring. Yes, that's what you said. I'm okay. just saying. Okay. All right, now that you've gotten a look at how fun English paper piecing is, let's look at how AccuQuilts can make it even better using our GoCube. So we have it here. So this is the pretty one. Yes. Things might this fall is the, apart. This, this is, is the open this one. This is the pretty one. Um, this is our Go English Paper Piecing Cube. Uh, we're going to open it up. It's just like our mix and match cubes. It has eight dies. Pull the skinny one first so you get the pattern book and the, um, the mat. mat. Yep. And here, let's pull these out, Erica, so we can okay. kind of talk about them. And uh, really, here you've got the essentials that you need. So we're going to take a look inside. Let's start with this one because this is. Oh, yeah, here. This is, I think of this as being, I think of the hexagon as being the core shape. Right. right. I feel like that's what most of us do. Okay. But here's what you're going to find because there are four shapes but eight dies because you've got dies to cut your paper or stabilizer, right as right. Belle would say. And then you've got one to cut the fabric. Right, so the bigger one has the fabric. And this is the one. Right, and you saw Bell's and how it had a hole in the middle. And right. that's for easy removal if you're using cardstock. So we can show you one. We're going to talk about this a little later. Yeah. But that's how it looks with the cardstock. So these, the four shapes really, I think, are the most popular. Now, the, the Hexagon is what we think of first off, but then right. there's a, you took away the other one. I did. There's a half hexagon that comes next. So if you don't want to, you can, you, you don't know, have to do Y seams. You don't have to do Y seams, right? but they're so easy with English paper piecing. And then the next there's the set, paper. there's the paper. So you can use cardstock or forevermore, I will be using stabilizer. Yes. We're going to try that in just a minute. And then we've got are an equilateral triangle, and then we've got a diamond shape. And what's really cool is these are all sized to work together. So they're one inch finished size, which is really the most popular size, I think, for the English paper piecing. And there's two for each one. There's the, the fabric. The fabric's gonna be a quarter inch bigger all around, just like with our other dies, we've built in a quarter inch seam allowance. Yep. And then the paper. And just like in our cube, there's a pattern that goes with yes. each shape. Yes, all kinds of little patterns. And free patterns on our website. For little hexagon okay. designs. All right, we're gonna put this over here for a minute. So I think we should cut um, some uh, fabric and stabilizer. Yes. Using our Go Me. Go Me, I've got it right here. I'm all ready for do us. Do you have fabric for us to cut? Uh, I do. Okay. Hold please. 
Here's some stabilizer. So this is some stabilizer. I don't know any of its particulars. No, um, but it said Bell Bruner sent us Bell this. Bru right, it said Bell Bruner sent us this, so. Okay, so she did four layers, so that's what I am gonna do. Now with stabilizer, kind of a fun fact, you don't have to worry about that lengthwise grain, just like you wouldn't have to worry about it with cardstock. Right. So since we're using our Go Me, we can actually leave this little tail at the end. Yes. Right? Okay, I'm gonna cut this one and then I'll let you cut some hexagons. It's so easy. So easy. And this is great, you know, a lot of you are thinking about, um, will these dies work in other machines? Yes, they're gonna work in all of our cutters, including the studio cutter. But like Belle said, this is a really great portable yes. project. We're giving Give it, it some, some love. love. We're gonna slide, don't lift. And now we have stabilizers and we'll show you here real quick how we've cut. It cuts out the circle, the center. So Isn't you can just pull fun. those out. Forevermore, Erica. Forevermore, okay. So I found some fabric oh, in my, my bag because I've been working with all my batik scraps. Is this one big yeah, enough? Yeah, that can be you. Okay, well that then. That can be you. Oh, it's not big enough. All right, let me find you a bigger one. Okay. I mean, it could be, but as long as we're cutting. Right, and this is, when we talk about scrap busters, boy Here's howdy. Nice big one. This is what we're it's talking about. purple. Imagine that, Erica. Imagine that. I'll trim it up just a little bit. And EPP is such a great way to use up your scraps. And truly, that is what we are doing. We mm -hmm. are using up our scraps. And I'm not gonna get rid of any of this because some of those smaller shapes are gonna work great. Yes. There we go. Okay. I All could right. probably so get we're a gonna find that triangle out of this, you know? That lengthwise grain, nice and tight. That's what we wanna have going through the cutter. So we're just gonna cover our hexagons. And you can always cut up to six layers of cotton. We're just gonna cut one today. And just like our Go, our Go Me, um, the handle turns both directions. Yes. Six pounds. This cutter weighs six pounds. Give it some love. All Slide, right. don't lift. It's over here. And look, Erica, I have all sorts of things for you here. Uh, Ooh, okay, don't I knock almost stuff broke off. the set. Don't okay. Break, don't break it. Okay. So, using fabric scraps, and you can really, like I said, use even the tiny ones. Now, it's also the only quilting activity I know where the postal carrier brings you all the supplies every day. So why don't you use those annoying sales postcards and magazine inserts to good use? So if you're not gonna use stabilizer, that's just a really great way to use those up. Yes, yes. Now, like I mentioned before, we talked about that quarter inch seam allowance. See how we've got that? So that, that causes two things. It gives you plenty to turn around right. and baste around but it also lets you machine piece them together if you're not a band of handwork. Right. And we have this wonderful book that shows all of the basics of English paper piecing, mm -hmm. including how to machine piece them. Yes. It's called English Paper Piecing Made Easy by Katja Merrick, and it's a beautiful book. So here's how to It really put takes your you step by step. Right, so and this is what you're gonna do if you're gonna just sew them. Mm -hmm. It shows you how to hand sew them, how to machine sew them, how to put those, how to swirl your, I mean, mm -hmm. it's really detailed. So if you're intrigued by that at all, this is a great book, it's a great resource. Okay, so just now in my quilting head, yes, here's what, what I thought. Of? So if I wanted to take these and glue baste them, yes. and then sew them together on my machine with a zigzag stitch. You could do that. You could totally do Especially that. Especially because with the, with the stabilizer. Mm -hmm. It's just gonna wash mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. So you wouldn't have to make Y seams. No. You could just do a decorative just do or a Do a little zigzag. decorative little zigzag or a blanket stitch or a, a like both way blanket stitch. Oh. In my head, I'm thinking of Holding stuff. heads, okay. So we've taken a look. Now let's take a look at those other shapes and how they work together. We've got give them examples. to you. Well, I thought you had them out here. Uh, I did. Did we not have them? They were right here on the set. They were. Are you sure they're not over there? I don't think so. Oh, they're right here. 
she cut them stole up. them. Okay, she so here we go. Up. I knew I'd seen them. Okay, here you go. Okay, so here we go. We've got some, we'll move this over. So this is the diamond shape. Mm -hmm. You can see they're just alternating. And we've got those are the papers in. Mm -hmm. Here's a block that has all of the shapes. The hexagon, mm -hmm. the diamond, the half hexagon, and this triangle. Right, that little tiny equilateral triangle. See, I told you, that's why I saved this scrap, because I'm going to cut one. Oh, look at that. And then these are half hexagons that make up that triangle in the center. It's hard to see because they, um, with, but that is really a cool looking one. That is super cool. Okay. So that is how those shapes kind of work together. And these are just samples from Gotcha's book. Yes, yes. Okay, so should now, we look at some quilts? Let's look at some other patterns. Okay. Okay, so first um, that we have our good friend Carolina Moore. Oh. Um, I made this super fun tote bag. Isn't this fun? It's called the Go Butterfly Tote. It's made with two and a half inch strips and hexagons and it uses all of the shapes. So here's the hexagons, mm -hmm. the half hexes, the diamonds and the tiny little triangles. She put the tiny little triangles on the ends of the hexagons which makes it kind of a jewel shape. Oh yeah, look Isn't at that. that. Cool? That is cool. And it's lined with something squishy. Yeah, it's got that sew-in foam stabilizer yeah. with it. So it's nice and soft-sided. It means it would be great for, it'd be nice and strong. You could put your go me and your cube in it, I bet. Your EPP yep. cube, all your supplies. You're ready to head off. You could put some other dies in it. I think it's great. I do too. All right, the next one that we've got is Go Hexagon Gardens. And I love this one. Okay, this is traditional. When you think of hexagons, do you think of like grandmother's flower right. garden and you can do single ones like this or you can add another row around it. So this is just hexagons and hexagon sides. And then it's got these little hexagons like leaves. And I've started working on this. I probably shouldn't say how long ago. Oh, but I've started. So I've much. started this one and it's, it's, it's I, been there. See, see, there are pieces of it in here. I yeah. swear. Yeah. But I'm doing my, Beautiful. that's what I'm doing with my batiks. Oh, there you go. All right, next is the beaded curtain wall hanging by our good friend Heidi Pridemore of the Whimsical Workshop. And okay, this is really how you should start. This is because a great Heidi starting Heidi uses all of these great shapes mm -hmm. and she puts them together and it makes this cute little wall hanging. Yep. And it's just really easy and sweet and portable and yeah. a great way to start It'd with It'd be a great shaping. size of project to be working on. You're not mm -hmm. gonna feel overwhelmed by it. Yeah. And you can change it up for any decor look. Now you've got, I think the next one's over I there, do. don't you? I don't often have things. We don't always let her, because she loses them. I do. Did you notice that? All right, these are the Rose and Heart Pillows by Christina Brinkerhoff of Center Street Quilts. She used Riley Blake flat fabrics. And are these not darling? Aren't they adorable? So they're actually pieced together and then sewn to the square. Right, so she has uh, applicate them. Machined, sewn these on, applique, and then she's kind of quilted on top of them. It's yeah. just a really fun treatment, and I love the little, the little baby clamshell quilting on there too. And this would be the mm. perfect example of how to wear into you stabilizer. Yes. Right, because yes. you could just leave it in there and not yep. have to worry about it. Exactly. I love that. Beautiful. Okay, we've got one more we're going to show right now, and this one is. Very three-dimensional. It's the Go it Tumbling Diamonds Table Runner. Now, Amanda Harward of Larkspur Quilts designed this one, and our dear friend Carolina from Always Expect More created this sample for Isn't us. Isn't that fun? It's beautiful. It is so That 3D pretty. effect, those tumbling blocks, people want to know how to yep. get them. Yep. There's this a die for that. Those diamonds. It's perfect. There is a die for that. Okay, well, next up, I think we should show you some of the actual ins and outs of actually doing English paper pieces. Yes. But before we dive into that, I think we should give away a special prize to a lucky viewer who's registered for our shows. Plus, I think we have a little something, something that we are gonna add in today, right? We do, we do. All right, the lucky registered viewer winning $100 in AccuQuilt reward points plus Plus, look at this, quilters. AccuQuilt has its own fabric now. Yes, so we've got a two fat quarter bundle. We actually sell these on the website now. They're 
fabric designed by our own team. I'll hold it up right. Yep. So this one's got our A logo and our orange peel shape. And this has Pam's pickup truck and some other stuff. And some other things, yes. Okay, so we're gonna give you not only $100 in AccuQuote reward points, but both of our fabric bundles. That's right. One of our fabric bundles. One of bundles. our little two. All right, drum roll, please. Debbie C. of Clayton, North Carolina. Congratulations. Congratulations, Debbie. I think that's so fun. Yes. Now, we do sell those on our website. There are two fat quarters in there, one of each. So check it out. All right. Since today's trunk show is all about Go Projects, we want to know, what is your favorite portable project? Is it English paper piecing? Do you like to bind a quilt? Do you hand stitch applique? That's right. All right, if you're watching on our website or on YouTube, you can click on the vote box below or to the right of the chat box. And if you're watching via Facebook, vote from the box that displays over our video. Okay, I typically have English paper piecing with me, especially if I'm gonna get on a plane. But honestly, lots of times I end up taking a nap. I, I resemble that, yeah. I resemble that. And I, I sometimes I do needlepoint, but yes. my favorite is if I have a quilt to bind. I love hand finishing the binding on my quilts. She's I know. so good about it. She's so it's good about it. And Jill on our team, she loves to hand. She loves to do it too. I don't know. There's just something so satisfying for me. But I like hand work. You do. You do. Erica likes smaller projects. And smaller projects. Yeah. And well, I like bigger projects. Yes. Yeah. All right. We're talking about projects on the go today and That's how to right. make them. So let's start with this little EPP kit that we use. There we go. Right here. Okay. Okay. Everything is available on our website, including the little zippy bag. So yes. let's take a look. So inside, Erica, do you want to talk about some? Yes. So the first step, the first thing that you do is whether you've got cardstock paper like this or heck, we're going to try the stabilizer stuff, aren't we? We are. I'm taking some home. Yeah. So then you're going to base this around. So depending on which one you're using, it doesn't matter and you're gonna baste it around there. So there's different ways to do that. So you can hand baste it from behind and just do little running stitches and just those are stitches that are gonna be left in. You can start on the front and do a running stitch around. You can see the knot there. You want to, With this, you wanna be sure you leave a knot on the front because then you're gonna go have to go back here you're sewing actually through your card or your stabilizer mm -hmm. and you're going to go back and pull that thread out and then pull your, your which inside is out, lots of which is lots of work. So I discovered and Pam with Pam's help that glue basting is definitely the way to go. Glue basting I used to is hand our friend. baste them, but here, go we'll ahead. No, I've got one. Oh, good. I, or do you have, have a, a little Taylor? June Taylor one here? Here, I'll try it. Oh, give me the June Taylor one. Okay, so I'm gonna try the little stabilizer one. So you just wanna give it a little bit of glue here. Okay, fun fact, I'm working on my great-grandmother and her siblings, sisters, made this beautiful grandmother's flower garden quilt for me 100 years ago. Okay. And uh, I thought, oh, I really need to recreate that. And so I have been doing English paper piecing for a long, well, 11 years since I started here. I have about 20 blocks done. I need like hundreds of them. But when I first learned how to do English paper piecing, um, I lived, it was when I first learned how to quilt and there was a little quilt shop in Fort Morgan, uh, Colorado called yes. Inspirations Quilt Shop. And they taught me how to do English paper piecing. Oh, how fun. And so I, the fabric um, for the centers of my flowers are from that quilt shop in Colorado and they will all be the same. Oh, how fun. Now, when I first started, somebody said, oh, you don't need any supplies, just use whatever glue stick you have. So I grabbed oh, one of the kids glue lie. sticks. And it was not successful and so that led me to not like it. Yeah. So then I just decided, well, that's silly. I know how to hand sew. You like hand sewing, Erica. Yeah. So then I did hand sewing and that was fine. But then when I discovered that fabric glue sticks are a, a, a horse a of thing. another color, that was when I was sold. Yeah, and this is the June Taylor one that I just used. And yep. I like this one. It shows purple. Yep. So you know how I feel about that. Yep. Kay. All right. So in our bag also, so we, you'll need needles and thread. 
Okay, so, so we now sell these great little things from Aurifil. Now we have an Aurifil thread set. That's our ghost. Those set. are our colors. We've got needles, and I love these because they come in, they're, they're milliner's needles. Yeah. I like to use a milliner's needle. It means milliner's needles are flexible. They have like this microscopic hollow core so that they're flexible, because if you're making hats, you need that, I guess. I guess so. And then if you're um, us, you probably need a lighted needle threader, which okay, is handy to this? have. These are all on our website. We've got some bindy clips because oh, Belle yeah. was using those. Belle was using bindy clips. Um, Karen K. Buckley scissors, mm -hmm. the little ones are perfect for this. And then we've got a, something new. We have got so tight magnets. So I'm gonna okay. open this up. So Erica's gonna open it up because what you wanna do is when you're stitching your next stitch, you're gonna take out the center of your flower mm -hmm. and then you're gonna start here and you're gonna take tiny little whip stitches. This one's... And what you do, you end up gripping this like it's a death grip. <laughs> but the reality is you can use magnets. Right, so okay. these are so tight magnets. And I'm gonna try them out. So you're just gonna put them here and it's gonna hold your pieces together. I know, that isn't is that clever? So clever. Isn't that clever? Yep, yep. I love it. And it took Erica and Kenyon to thread my needle for me today. We should have opened up the needle threader. I just do single, th uh, single. Yes, I do too. I love that Belle said she's got the thinner weight thread coming. I should have, I think I have some lighter weight thread in here somewhere. Um, yep, so you're just gonna start here. I would start at the center and work my way out. You can start at the way out and work your way to the center. And you're just gonna come right here and just take some really tiny little stitches. And I like to do just kind of like anchor it on the end with a couple of yep. stitches real close together. And yep. then, oh, I'm... And then Erica and I could just literally sit here for hours we and could. do this. We could, we could. But we'll just do it for two more minutes. And so then we'd see. need a good movie and... I'd be all set for the night. See? Or the rest of the day, as yep. the case may be. Uh, it's gonna be like 120 in Omaha today, so in the heat index. So we're just gonna we're do just this. We're gonna take these little, these little bites. Yep. I've heard people call them that, little bites. And you're just trying to catch one or two threads, because you'll hear, you'll hear English paper piecing folk talk about um, wanting the thread to melt into your project. Yeah, you don't want it to show. Yeah. And you kind of want to use a neutral color um, when you're doing it. Right, I didn't. I grabbed purple because I was working with purple fabric. That's okay. All right, so as we go through here, I'm going to show you real quick what it's going to look like when we're done. I'm used to sitting when I do this, you know? Yep. So... I'm gonna take this magnet off. And you can kind of feel where those, the cardboard is. So if, you, yep. if you're if you using the cardstock that's gonna have to come out, you can feel your needle and, right. and feel that it's not going through that. Right. So here's this seam that I made and you're just gonna continue all the way around your flower mm -hmm. until it's all done. Okay, I'll stop. And you wanna leave that little template in the project until all the shapes are sewn onto other shapes. The, and that hole, the die cuts, is perfect for popping it out. Yes. So in order to turn my flower and be able to do my sides, I pulled out that center. Okay. Look at how fun and that you is. you do yours a little bit differently. I kind of go around mine and then kind of, I'm going over this way and then I'm going to sew it on out. So oh, I, I just don't. kind of do that. I just do one side at a time. Well, we all have our ways. But you know what? Any way you do it, it's fun and it's gonna work really well for you. And we've um, shown you how we've used our AccuQuilt little zippy bags. That's right. Which we have. That's right. Uh, but we also have some really fun ones from Carolina. We do have, and hold on just a minute. Oh, we didn't even show them the stiletto. These yeah. are super cute, but nobody's made them for us, so that's why we're using our AccuQuilt ones still. Yeah. Somebody needs to make Somebody these. Needs to make these. Uh, these look. are the uh, Easy Zipper Pouches by Carolina Moore, and it has a zipper. Um, okay, this is a secret, so for sure we're going to tell you. Uh, Carolina was in our studio last week. She was. She was. And she taught us all about fun things fun that things. are coming yes. up soon. 
Yes. So here she's got zippers in here and she's used the English paper piecing to just kind of highlight it and yeah. she's pieced the backing and they've, again, that foam. Right. Just to kind of stabilize it and keep it safe. I love it. And what's your tip about if you're using vinyl? Oh, if you're using vinyl, don't pin it. That's a great time to be using bindy clips. And if you don't have any, you need to get some because they work beautifully. But if you put holes in vinyl, once you put a hole in it, you can't get a hole out of it. And um, on the website, like they're called something. The, on the Wonder website, clips. they're Wonder Clips. We call them bindy clips. We do. All right, so are you feeling inspired yet to take so some nice. projects along with you when you're on the go? I think we better give away another $100 to inspire somebody else. It's gonna be $100 in AccuQuilt reward points and an AccuQuilt fabric bundle to another lucky viewer who's registered for our events. All right, today's second lucky registered winner, um, viewer winning $100 in AccuQuilt reward points as well as the fabric bundle is, drum roll please. Lynette M. from Columbus, Michigan. Congratulations. Congratulations. You're gonna love this. Oh, you are. All right, we're talking all about portable projects today, and that includes, well, really, all of our Go Fabric cutters are portable. But the Go Me is our smallest lightweight cutter and the easiest to take on the go. I have actually taken our Go Me with me to London, like in my suitcase. In your suitcase? Times. Yeah. Okay, that's further than I've taken mine. Mine's gone to Iowa with me. Iowa's far. Iowa's far. <laughs> it also is the best cutter for small spaces. So if you're in a small apartment, you have a really small studio, maybe you're taking it with you in the car or your suitcase mm -hmm. or in a camper. You know, it's a hand operated, so it's great. You can sit at a campsite or in your RV and work on that. It'd be great for that. That's right. Okay, now our Go Me comes with two dies, a cutting mat, and a pattern book. That's right. And those um, two dies, you can see them right here in our graphic, are the three inch finished half square triangles, the three inch finished quarter square triangles, and a six by six mat. Works like all of our other colors. You yep. can cut up to six layers of cotton or four layers of fused cotton. Um, and you can, those half square triangles, quarter square triangles, have those dog ears cut off, it's beautiful. That's right, and there are so many of our dies that'll work with the Go Me. In fact, over 70% of our dies, including most of our cubes. We also have block on board dies, like my favorite Glorify Nine Patch, yes. that'll work with this cutter. And most of our wonderful applique shapes, including this month's die to try, the Go Sloth. So cute. Uh, we also have two strip dies that work with this cutter, our multi-strip and one for two and a half inch strips. Let's cut some strips. Let's do. Let's take a look at that because that's important, I think, for having a cutter is to be able to cut strips. Well, and especially two and a half inches, that we use that for borders, binding, sashing, jelly rolls. I want to be able things. to cut my, cut my bindings. Right. All right, so this is our two and a half inch strip die. It's just like its big sister that cuts three, only this one cuts two, which makes right. it narrow enough to go through our cutter. So two and a half, two and a half is five inches. We've added a quarter of an inch on either side, and we've just rough cut with the fabric. With the fabric. Here, I was just trying to lay this down here. Okay, so in order to not get those little mountains in the middle, you wanna make sure that fold is parallel to that black line right here. Yep. All right, make sure you have a six by 24 cutting mat. Yes. It will not work in the it Go Me. It will not work in the Go Me if you're trying to shove a 10 by 24 inch mat through. Yep. This is a great cutter for crafters, for kids, for teens. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you wanna have a craft space and they can open it up and take it out. There you go. All right. Give it some love. Slide, don't lift. There we go. And now we have perfect two and a half inch strips. See? Which you're gonna use for days. That's right. And up to six layers. Again, we cut four this time. Um, no mountains in the middle, no dipsy nope. doodles as I like to call them. They're just perfect. Now these two and a half inch strips work for borders, binding, sashing, sashing but they also work for several of our new June Taylor Quilt As You Go kits for things like mug mats, placemats, bags, table runners, and stockings. That's right, and a great reminder. You know, if you don't have a cutter yet, a Go Me is a fun way to get started. Plus, 
Don't forget, we've got that new Trade Up and Go program, right? We do, we so do. you've always got the option to trade in your Go Me either with us or your local AccuQuilt retailer for a Go or a Go Big. It's a super easy process. You get to keep everything that came in the box, your cubes, your mats, mm -hmm. your dies, all the things. Mm -hmm. You're just trading up that cutter. That's right. So let's keep the inspiration rolling and look at some projects that you can make just with those dies the that we dies. told you about that come in the box with the Go Me. Okay, first of all is the Go Me card trick while hanging. And this is super easy, super fun, super quick. And I love it because it gives that illusion of those overlocking, interlocking pieces. And really we're working with half square and quarter square triangles yep. to create that. Yep. And I love these blues, this dark really indigo, go. I love blue. it. Okay. Then Next we have the Go Me tote bag by our good friend Terry Vandebosch of Lizard Creek Quilts. And Terry actually made this to haul your Go Me in. She did. So it fits a Go Me. It'll actually inside. fit a Go Me and lots of other things as well. She even has directions on how to cover a little base for the bottom. Mm -hmm. And just make it, she's covered it up, but if you want to, you can just leave it open at one end so that you can slip it out oh, and, and wash, wash it, it if you need to. There's pockets. There's all kinds of pockets on the inside yep. and pockets on the outside. And look. We've even got this quilting on the go embroidery design that you can download on the website. It's great. It's perfect for your little gummy to Love take that. places. And again, she's used that foam. I like that foam. I do too. I used it to make I learned a, so much today. It's, it's an instructional day. Well, you're not gonna learn anything from this because you made this sample. I did. This is called the <laughs> Go Me Windy Baby Quilt. Um, I use Robert Kaufman fabric and I turned those little blocks on point, those little pinwheel blocks on point. So here we go. We're seeing we've got half square triangles yep. and quarter square triangles. Yep. And it just makes oh, they that aren't look. On point, They're not on point, but they give the illusion of being on point. Yeah, and then... Cute. A, a lovely binding. I'm impressed by your binding, Pam Heller. Um, I hand stitched that binding, Erica. Just Always for you. Know. All of the patterns you see today are available as free downloads from our AccuQuilt website. Be sure to download your patterns before your dies arrive so you'll be ready to go with your portable projects. All right, quilters, our friends at FIGO oh, gave gosh. us some fabric selections today to give away. So let's take a look in our magic fabric mailbox and see what they've sent. You almost forgot, didn't you? I almost forgot. I was, I'm was. i so busy thinking about <laughs> things I'm going to make with English paper pieces. This is what happens when we get Oh, here. my gosh, Erica. <gasps> look at this. Ooh. Okay, <gasps> these are beautiful deal? fabrics. Oh, my gosh. They look like they're watercolors. They do. These are gorgeous. Yeah, here. Oh. They say we have to give them away. Really? It's true. Oh. oh I gosh. love these. Okay, are this fun. would be perfect for English paper piecing. And if you did like They're a nice solid little center. prints. Yeah, these little prints are great. Figo, Figo, Figo. These are you fabulous. Did good things. Okay, yeah, this one on top I would love for All English right. paper. Piecing. We have to give it away. Okay, fine. The first winner of a Figo fabric selection is Drumroll, please. Deborah E. from Chester, Arkansas. Congratulations. Congratulations. Hey, you should check out Belle Bruner's um, Airbnb. Oh, yes. The second winner of a selection of fabrics is, drum roll, please. It's Barb H. from Perm, Minnesota. Congratulations. And a huge shout out to Fingo for sponsoring today's trunk show, helping us make a great show. Our quilters are gonna love making their portable fabrics. And you this. know what this says? You're the best. Oh, sometimes we say that in the dream studio. You're the best. Yes. All right, there's a note right over there. Okay. All right. Well, quilters, earlier in the show, we asked what your favorite portable projects are. So now it's time to hear some responses. Do we have our um, note from I the... think Brock's going to hold it up on his dry board. Oh, okay. All right. The oh. team has counted our votes and all the majority. And the majority of you enjoy, drum roll please. <gasps> Binding a quilt. Binding a Just quilt. Just like Erica. Just like me. Yay. Yay, that's exciting. That is. I have done that in the past. All right. I love hand binding. All right, quilters. We've got tons of great deals available for, our, for you on our website, including this month's very popular dye to try, that ghost sloth. And he is still, we still got a few of them. We have working, a few left. Climbing around in the warehouse. Yep. So. Um, I love our sloth. You can only get that dye from us or a local retailer. Uh, through the end of August or while supplies last. Plus that English paper piecing cube on sale on the website. 
Oh my goodness. You get your order in, I put, open a new tab in your browser, type in accuquilt.com slash party to go to the site, see the offers and place your order. All right, it is time for us to get ready for the next event. We hope that today's trunk show was just what you needed to help inspire you to get quilting on the go. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching our show. Be sure to follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel and look for live events every Tuesday and Wednesday. You can visit the events page on AccuQuilt's website for more details on upcoming shows. And while you're there, check out the blog for tips, tricks, tutorials, and inspiration galore. And remember at AccuQuilt, we help you cut time so you can quilt more. Be sure to join me every Wednesday at 12 noon Central Time for AccuQuilt Live. We have tons of fun. Tomorrow, the lovely Eric and I will be assembling our quilt tops and discussing border options for the Go Shoe Fly Spin Throw Quilt. You'll want to tune in to see if you've won a door prize that we give away during our shows. And join us every Tuesday at 12 noon Central Time for launch parties and more trunk shows like what we had today. These events are filled with more tips, tricks, and inspiration. Next time, we'll be sharing a virtual look at the recent quilt festival in Long Beach, California. Hope to see you there.